Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to uh, More Eights. I'm Toaster, and this is... Saruman of Many Colors, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be casting a match between uh, Eon Tatos, also known as Eon, and Phoenix Legion PHL. Um, what, what do you know about these teams, Saruman? Well, unfortunately, I'm not privy to the EU scene, even though I have met some members of Eon Synergy personally. Uh, I've actually had the privilege of drinking with Lizzie over at Metcon. I've played uh, PUBG a little bit with Kubrick, who's a good friend of Airlock, who I've come to know and love as my own free crazy Canadian friend. And Jay-Z and Lermgott are also okay, too. I talked to them a little bit on the stream, and they were giving me some hardcore layovers because they want everybody to just be moved instead of one team leaving lobby and sorting things out that way. But never mind that. That's not here or there. What I do know is that both these teams are filled with loads of talent, and Phoenix Legion has actually went the extra mile to bolster their stim, their um, <laughs> stim, to bolster their light lance by asking Stimrog of EMP to join them on the EU circuit. Stimrog isn't playing for NA EMP because I'm guessing the times don't necessarily work up work with him but at the end of the day Stimrog is still probably one of if not the best light in the game uh he's a guy that's been playing for many years in comp he started playing MechWarrior online since the closed beta and he's been a staple light pilot in the EU scene since so having him on Phoenix Legion's roster will definitely help give them an edge but that's not to say that Eon Synergy also doesn't have their champions as well as everyone knows Eon Synergy was the team that brought down the mighty Imperial in the 2018 WC the Stockment tournament and they currently hold the title right now for best team in the game, and it's easy to see why. You have guys like Lizzie, who did, who is an amazing trader, Buria, who used to be part of Black Spike's Mercenary Corps, coming to join them over. Yeah, they've also added some new additions with uh, Jay Z, Wolverine, Lerm God, No Slouches, and also Denair Walker coming over from RJF. So overall, a really stacked EU team. But you know, let's not count PHL out here. You're looking at their Yarl's list stats stats before this match i was pretty impressed you know uh stimrog definitely kind of the standout but you know polycat and uh, el rizzo uh, sinjo some people other p players on their team also solid clearly top of the game players but we'll see we'll see uh definitely i'd say eon is the favorite but you know they're gonna have to play well and not make any mistakes phl could definitely punish them for any slip-ups and the interesting thing to note is that the bit, large portion of the team that actually won in the WC isn't necessarily present right now. Jay-Z and Lermgod weren't even on Eon Synergy's uh, WC roster. Wolverine was on it, but he didn't actually travel to Metcon to compete in the final ring of matches. Um, I believe Daruin might have been available, but I'm not sure since I never actually got to meet him. So right now, and Daenerys Walker was also a new entry to Eon before that team was formed, I believe. But even still, a lot of talent. Uh, talent on that roster and it's going to be interesting to basically see how this is going to evolve but yes you are right still a lot of the talent on um, phoenix legion polycat uh, amazing light pilot in her own right they also have uh, people like shabraza and arend and right now as we talk about these teammates let's start going over to the map ban phase yeah they're antsy to get this going so let's do it which is funny because their teams aren't even ready yet. Aren says that Zinjo is late for traffic, but yes, let's go and get this started. Let's have that map ban page up. Yep. So, as we said, I don't know, we mentioned this yesterday, I'm not sure it made it into the cast, but uh, Rubelite, for whatever reason, popular in EU scene, but not popular so much in NA. But I'd, I'd kind of expect that map, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Well, even still, yes, as we talked, Rubelite is very popular in EU, and it looks like Terra Therm and Alpine Peaks are already off the board. Very smart bans. Viridian Bog also being banned by Eon Synergy, so that leaves Rubelite and River City. And, yep, we are going to see Rubelite Oasis, a popular staple in EU, be the map to take. Yeah, I wonder why. I think maybe just playing it a lot in World Championships, that seemed to be a popular one. Eon might just be carrying that into this tournament. Who knows? Well, even still, Rubelite is a very hot map, but the most important thing about Rubelite is that, once again, as we talked about to death, is that it favors trading engagements. People on different sides of the map are able to access very strong trading lanes. The map isn't exactly favorable to Brawl. It isn't favorable to 
there's ways to defend against um, LRM and ATM strategies, even though LRMs and ATMs are still decently strong on that map. There's a lot more cover than on a map like Alpine, where if you're caught out in a specific location, you just get annihilated by LRMs and ATMs, as we saw last night with the match between uh, 228 and Evil, or 228 and Potato Killers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Rubelite, definitely a lot of nice hard cover, but also pretty easy to kite the pushes with all the different levels and, you know, pretty, I'd say, restricted ramps to get up to those higher levels where your traders want to sit. Um, but that that's going to be uh, drops fours and five, so we got a while till we see this. Yep, I believe that right now it's going to be Conquest Solaris City for drop one. Now, we saw Evil pull something unconventional, as um, Ragnar said himself in the interview. They wanted to catch 228 by surprise by essentially having a Lerm strat and tucking all their mechs on one side of the map to try and Lerm 228 from outside of the city. I don't think we're going to see that necessarily with uh, this match between Eon and Phoenix Legion. I think that they might go for more conventional trading strategies, maybe with some ATMs thrown in for good measure, but it seems like that Solaris City, the way that it's formed, it doesn't necessarily favor Lerms unless Toaster, you know something I don't about. I, I, I don't think it favors Lerms. You know, Evil tried as, as much as they could, but I think you know this map really favors you know your faster mechs, maybe something with ATMs, where you can you know be a little more effective inside closer ranges. But yeah, we'll see. Um, I don't know. We, we were surprised last night with the Lerms, so um, we might we were almost expecting teams to push Theta, maybe try and control it kind of like Terra Therma of old, if anyone remembers that map. But it seemed like uh, 228 and Evil last uh, yesterday were kind of more keen on holding the outside of the match, maybe kind of almost NASCARing around and uh, just trying to hold as many points on the outskirts and never setting foot, step, ugh, setting foot on Theta. You know, it's kind of a trap if... Uh, it's pretty easy to fall into if you're not super on your toes. Exactly. So necessarily, I don't think fights are. I don't think fights are necessarily going to happen in the center of the map, and I think that teams will probably maybe want to avoid the center of the map or maybe get a quick light cap in. And I think we're going to see a lot more action along Epsilon and um, Epsilon and Kappa for that reason. And it's probably going to involve teams having a bit more mobility. Like we'll probably see less mechs like the Annihilator, more mechs like the Mad Cat Mark II, and we're going to see teams try and get uh, a bit more of an even keeled approach to their movement now 228 definitely kind of set the bar for this map the way that they rotated around the map with a decently mobile heavy and assault body that was able to just plow through any opposition that stood in front of them was very appealing and it's probably something that other teams in the NMA model EU however as a competitive scene I'm not too familiar with EU I am familiar with Eon as I said not too familiar with EU but the thing about EU is that they like to come up with their own strategies and they like to basically Basically, they basically like to kind of reinvent the wheel, so to speak. They like to try unconventional things. As a matter of fact, Phoenix Legion was the one that kind of set the bar for Eisengrim's cap strategy against 228 in the last season of MRBC, where they ran around the map in Tourmaline and essentially used a greater amount of speed and mobility against 228's slower mechs. So Phoenix Legion is definitely very inventive. I'm not too familiar with Aren's, uh style of leadership and play, but I do get a feeling from seeing his teams in action that he does like to kind of think outside the box with his ideas so i think we might be seeing some rotations some counter rotations definitely some nascar on solaris city i think a lot of high level comp teams are definitely going to want to avoid fighting in the middle because fighting in the middle is going to be an attritional war it's going to be a high casualty war the flanks are going to be rough and brutal and there's not a lot of space to work with and while there's definitely small buildings around the theta point that you can kind of use to fight each other off it's not going to be enough cover especially for heavier mechs, higher mechs like the Annihilator perhaps, that you can kind of, you know, with proper accuracy you might even be able to shoot above it from those buildings. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, and if anything you know, if if last night is anything to go by, you know, I think this will maybe favor PHL and their kind of inventiveness with those, you know, can't pin us down cap strats. We'll see. Um, We saw some interesting mechs choices last night, you know. I wouldn't have expected linebackers to be so popular with their lack of jump jets, but, you know, maybe you get the loyalty one and pop a jump jet in it. You can jump over buildings. Um, Also saw uh, summoners being brought out. Not, I don't say, I wouldn't think it's a pot too popular mech these days, but, you know, it did work. 
And we also saw a Zeus Skokomish with, uh, as a streak boat to kind of hunt those lights trying to dart around and cap. So it's definitely a very interesting map. Um, I think streaks are probably in a good place, especially IS streaks with the recent buffs to their spread, hitting more side torsos and CTs. It's going to be mm -hmm. hard hard for those light mechs to be doing too many shenanigans. I think maybe you're better off with kind of a more, you know, spread your tonnage out a lot and get some faster heavies and mediums to kind of go along. Definitely. And um, it's going to come down to whichever team could probably rotate the fastest and which team can kind of take over their the cap points, which team can kind of control the map, avoid the center, and which team will be able to connect with the necessary kills in order to drop the heavy body in order in order to basically win. <laughs> Simple as that. Map control is probably going to be a big deal. That's probably why Evil ran LRMs in their first drop. You know, LRMs, even though the buildings do offer some cover, the amount of area that they can kind of the the amount of area they can cover with their range is substantial. And the cover around the main city in Solar City. It's not exactly overwhelming. Like, you can definitely arc some missiles over it. Uh, I'm not yeah. exactly sure how many um, Lermex have jump jets, but you could probably even do some, some good old-fashioned, you know, jump jet Lerming to try and get over those buildings. But it's nothing too, like crazy and i think atms can also get it done like if you have an atm huntsman you can use jump jets to kind of pop up atm them to death and then uh pop back down right back into the safety of cover so it's not necessarily that we won't see atms and lrms on solaris city it's just that it seems like it would be a uh, a bit more unconventional to the direct fire weapons everyone's using yeah i think one of the big factors the reason we've seen so many lockdowns in this first drop you know regardless of map has just been you know the amount of tonnage on the field you know 575 625 tons you're seeing you know, four or five assaults, most of these drops at least. And, you know, those those mechs, even with cover, <laughs> you're going to get hit some by the lerms if you're not, like, super tightly poking. But who knows? Who knows? Uh, we did see, I do know that, I believe the reason uh, Evil chose the Mad Cats and Supernovas last night for this map was specifically those mechs do have jump jets. And, you know, we saw getting up on those buildings did have a pretty big effect on their ability to safely kind of spread their forces out. But but we'll see. There are a lot of also kind of tricky spots. We didn't see uh, too many of them really utilized last night because teams were uh, mostly sticking to the edges. But on the inside of by Theta, there are some really tricky high spots on those buildings. And even on the outskirts, there's some little garages where you can park a mech and maybe try and hide and sneak a kill. But... I don't know. I don't know what we'll see. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about... Uh, I don't know. What do you want to talk about? I want to talk about kind of these... Uh... <laughs> well, uh, now that we finally got the uh, rundown on the fact that drops 2 and 3 are not going to come down to missiles because no lock-on weapons are allowed, um, part of me is starting to wonder, you think that Eon will go for heavy range trading the similar way 228th has gone for heavy range trading or do you think that they uh might go for a bit more speed in their drop deck i think from my experience with polar domination that's dropped two for everybody out there um with no lock-ons i think you do need to have at least one or two overwatch mechs to sit in the back maybe you know in the past it's been lighter drops or polar dom but you know people sit trebs or uh, the ER large hunchback or even just pure laser vomit hunchback with the two ER larges just enough to kind of scratch and peak trades. I don't think going full brawl is necessarily the way to go, especially with the amount of tonnage in that drop. Evil tried it, but with some kind of more mid rangey laser vomit mechs, they had, you know, mid range laser vomit Stormcrows one game and then hunchback four Ps and hunchback two Cs the other. And it just didn't seem to really work. Uh, 228s night gears with their gauss and er large were just able to put in too much damage while they tried to close and you know 228 also brought a lot of little slippery lights to kind of harass them so you can't just rush the night gears or the range traders so i don't know it's it's a hard it's a hard uh, thing to push on that map there's so much kind of open cover especially on domination where you're kind of pinned to pushing toward through the center but we'll see we'll see um I don't think I just don't think brawling right now is in that great a position with uh, some of the uh, ER large laser and gauss, especially with the night gear kind of still being a thing rearing its head. 
mechs just always, I think, probably going to be some part of the meta just because of the amount of firepower it can mount for its tonnage. Well, Brawl's never really been strong for a very long time. It probably won't be strong for any time soon, especially with the fact that there's going to be some pretty substantial learn buffs going on. Uh, I believe that the velocity's getting buffed, the heat generation's getting buffed, pretty much lerms across the board, lerms, ATMs, missile variants are going to uh, come with a very nice strong buff next Tuesday, which is probably going to make... Uh, which is probably going to make... Um, Lerm decks much more common on more maps and more people are going to basically try and fit them in wherever possible because the amount of velocity they bring and the quick kill time they're going to have compared to things like uh, AC5s, lasers, even Gauss rifles. Like, yep. it's just something that, you know, it, 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 the, the power is going to be undeniable. It's going to be like, you know, in, say, World of Warcraft, right? Like, when Fire Mage or Ice Mage was brutally strong, even though they're more kind of like crowd-clearing classes or something like that, you still tried to fit an Ice Mage or a Fire Mage against bosses that were single target because they were just so strong. And it's the same thing with, you know, trying back in the day where no matter what the map was in MWO, you would bring Pop-Tart Victors. You would bring Jenners because they were just the strongest mechs available. It didn't matter if a map might not have favored Jump Jets. It didn't matter if a map was a little more hot. It didn't matter about any of the other uh, potential baloney disadvantage that might affect those mechs. You just brought them because they were simply strong. So that's probably what's going to happen with Lerms. You're going to see more teams try and fit them in more decks, even if the Lerms might not be completely applicable and we might see more teams try to fit the mech to the strategy than the strategy to the mech like just try and build decks around learn supernovas learn mad cats atm huntsmans learn mad dogs even who knows they might get super classical with a mech that who is whose weapon and mech combination has been so iconic in the battle tech novels in other mech warrior games just it's it's going to be insane it's going to be it's going to be chocolate rain, chocolate poo rain. <laughs> Just Lermageddon not... 2.0. And I know that lights are definitely going to suffer too. Like one thing that a lot of people are going to forget is that this is going to be an indirect nerf to lights because the fact that lock-on weapons kind of mitigate some of the strengths of lights, which is that they are able to dodge shots and maneuver. Yeah, so yeah. So you have a weapon that you don't have to aim the lights are going to be in a big trouble because it removes the element of skill that comes with light piloting, which is using your hitbox and using your jump jets to dodge shots. You know, using your speed to juke shots. It's something that's going to be missed. Yeah, we'll have to see. Everything's locked on now. We'll have to see how this balance patch uh, turns out. I know I'm worried and some other players are worried, but we'll see. Now, luckily, the our for, the format of this tournament tournament has been set so that you know we only can see lock on weapons in drops one, four, and five. So we're guaranteed at least two of our drops to not see any of that those shenanigans, which I think is a little bit nice. Um, but yeah, we're still waiting on PHL here. Uh, they, apparently, they've got a driver in traffic um, at seven of eight. I don't know. Don't know if they're gonna get their player in they might have to just drop it seven of eight they've they've already i think gone over their time uh, on... i believe that the time is 15 minutes so okay 15 minutes, minutes. to basically come back to the situation and play <laughs> in order for them to have eight people in play simple as that um but one thing that I would like to say is I'm very interested to see who is going to be taking over the light roles for Eon Synergy. Now, the biggest names from Eon Synergy's light lances were Dered goes to Faster and Hardock. Hardock and his Locust, Dered and the Wolfhound, they were the big winners in uh, the WC. And I believe Burya also was one of their top lights as well. So I'm guessing what we're going to be seeing is Burya in a light. But I'm wondering, who's going to be light piling with him? Is it going to be Lerm God? Because we've seen him have some success with lights. Daenerys Walker's had some success with lights. Uh, Qbert as well, also a Swiss Army knife. Like, the truth is that the talent level on Eon Synergy is very great. And they're skilled with all kinds of mechs. They really don't get pigeonholed into one kind of mech class and while we've seen you know a pilot like stimrog do extraordinarily well with heavy assault medium whatever the hell he wants to pilot you know his strength has always been in the light mech so people know him as a light mech pilot yeah. so there's just no one on eon that really stimrog. sticks out as like their the what who is who would be the go-to light pilot granted i'm not as familiar with their team but you're right it's 
it's it's a little confusing. It seems like they have an awful lot of heavy and assault pilots, but maybe that's just this drop. You know, maybe we'll see Dared and uh, Buria show, or not Buria, but I forget who else he said show up later. Yeah, and I mean, Polycat I also know is a very strong light pilot. Like, if Polycat and Simrog are the light duo, which I'm not even sure, because Polycat was also good at other mechs, it'll be an interesting challenge for Eon Synergy because Phoenix Legion will have a very strong light lance, and a very strong light lance can take you very far. Strong light lances can carry teams. Yeah, but they get oh, sorry, if they if they know how to work together and kind of mirror each, mirror each other's actions well it it's, can be a complete game changer regardless of their skill level um you know it's definitely something you got to work on you got to play your lights together you got to get them you know duo dropping and that sort of thing just to work on your chemistry and i think that might be one of phl's strengths for this match is this match in general you know eon's got you know four uh, four new players on their team for this season whereas phl i think has been kind of more consistent you know ever since i believe they they qualified for worlds in 2017 and 2018 with their main core team so they've been together a lot they know kind of how they want to play they know how each other play and that can be a real strength for a team Exactly, and I think also the fact that Phoenix Legion and Eon Synergy have played each other so many times kind of presents interesting opportunities because they're familiar with each other, which is kind of a greater challenge to Arend because it's something that he's going to have to overcome, you know? Like, one of the strengths of Phoenix Legion is the fact that they've managed to go to the unconventional. They pull these interesting strategies that yep. kind of offset teams and it looks like they might have to do it now because they're going to have to pull in a team a teammate because we're at the 15 minute marker and we're yeah well hopefully it really does sound like they have a backup at least so Sinjo might not make it in for this one but hopefully if it's just traffic he'll get in for the later drops but yeah we'll see um it, it is kind of interesting these two Teams, I believe you're right, have played each other a lot in uh, Worlds, uh, the qualifying rounds and comp queue, uh, just kind of because of their time zone, right? They've they unintentionally scrim each other doing doing those queues to build their elo to qualify for semis, and you know they've probably kind of built up their own little ecosystem of strats that you know is a little bit different from what we see in NA, just because you know they play different teams, right? But it looks like. PHL has eight in, Eon has eight in, so we're getting ready to drop here, folks. Yes, uh, 15 straight minutes of talking, absolutely wonderful, but um, I know that everybody loves to hear the beautiful voices of me and Toaster, the soothing tones. We are currently releasing our Lullaby album um, in a couple of months. Please pick it up, uh, you 58 to 60 viewers. The people that are currently watching will be our first 60 purchases. Uh, with that, we'll also send in a nice code for 500 to 1,000 MC. We'll see about that, but um, we, are go we are starting to move. Yeah, just look for the uh, mixtape that's on fire in your local Target. But, all right. Question mark, question mark. He is kind of vital. He unlocked. Oh, my gosh. Arend asking for another five minutes. Are we going to be generous? Is Eon going to be generous, I guess, is the big question. Looks like Zinjo has finally made it. He must have just run in the door, starting his, up his computer. Munka S. Cutting it close here, PHL, but, you know, they had already uh, moved back their start time from 3 to 4, so looks like it's just maybe not their week. So, yeah, like we said, expect kind of, I would guess, fast, fast move, a lot of fast movers on this map. I think it's a good kiting map if you want to go for just the all-in cap strat, which uh, PHL, as we said, seem to have uh, uh, kind of created an Eisen uh adapted for their own means and worlds but we'll see how eon reacts will eon try something similar themselves expect a lot of streaks for this match maybe some atms uh, jump jet mechs are always advantage on this map with their ability to jump high up on buildings you know just take shortcuts rather than having to go a long way around Exactly, and it's going to be something to see. It really is going to be something to see what Phoenix Legion brings. I'm honestly excited for this match because of that inventiveness. Like, I feel like we're going to see something new. Um, that they're going to bring something to try and set uh, Eon Synergy off their guard. 
Lizzie asking if he can bring his Lerm Atlas. We already know he's already in his Lerm Atlas. Who are you kidding, Lizzie? Yeah, you know, he's asking if he can rebuild it. I mean, you know he doesn't have a non-Lerm Atlas. Come on. All his atlases are Lerm Atlases, and all Jay's stalkers are probably Lerm stalkers these days. Mm-hmm, definitely. I mean, come on, he's like the one who invented the Lerm Atlas, pretty much. He's yep. the guy who can get, like, 1,500 damage in the Lerm Atlas, so it's all fun. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder how many stalkers we'll see from Jay-Z. Probably he'll be bringing all three, just because that is his pet mech. Uh, any other pet mechs out there for you guys? What, what, what's chat? What chat? Right now, while we got some dead time, what's your favorite mech to bring? What's your kind of your pet mech that if you're having a bad day, maybe you just hop in and say, "I'm gonna kill somebody." Jenner F. Jenner F. Jenner. Oh, that's a fun mech. That one. That one is uh, just F. a treat. Jenner F. It's a classic. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care that. Uh... I don't care if anyone doesn't like it. The Jenner F is like, it's like that broken down Camaro that you just don't want to get rid of. Like, it's terrible. Its engine's always running. It uses up 15 miles per gallon on gas, and it's completely not cost effective at all. But you know what? You love that Camaro, and you'll never throw it away. Yeah, yeah. My my personal favorite, and people are going to hate me for this, is the just the, the stock dire, or not the stock direwolf prime, but the direwolf prime with those 6ER meads, 2ER large, and 2 gals. And just kind of ruin somebody's day or somebody's match with that mech. It's always been a little I have a giggle a little bit when I play that one. But yeah, it's it's for certain a little bit out of the meta, even though the armor quirks did help it recently. I'm sorry, what mech was that again? Dire Direwolf Prime. Oh my! I'm, I'm a dirty tryhard, or I don't know. Back in the you day, are. it was a tryhard mech. I don't, I'm not you sure you could say that now. Tryhard. Oh my goodness! You, you are the, you are the guy who would. You're like just the roaming lump. That's what you are. You're just the guy that's just like, oh no, no, no. That's the, that's just you. You just walk into the building, and when yep. you walk, the floors creak in. You have to shove past all the chairs and stuff. And then when you sit down, the chair might even break. Just unbelievable. All right, all right. Sinjo is here. He made it. Thank. Oh God. my goodness. Only twenty-two minutes of talking. We're good. We're good. We're alive. We made it. Yeah, they're technically two minutes over. This should be a pe penalized. But you know what? If Eon's all right with it, then the Eon's all right. All right yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to throw the book at him just yet. Well, if they didn't throw the book at him, there's no reason we should. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Please ready up, Sinjo. Please, sir. I'm begging you. Monka S. Monka Eon's S ready. Eon's ready. Sinjo, hit that button. Oh man, he's he's just trolling us at this point, I think, chat. He probably like... is. Stimrock giving us the I don't know what the hell's going on face right now. Yeah, right now chat's already at sleep at the wheel. Daenerys Walker, he might even be playing sleeping right now. That's a lot of fun. Seeing his mech, it won't be moving. It'll just be sitting there like a giant yep. lump of poop. And with our luck, you know, now one of the Aussies is going to disconnect immediately. <laughs> After redrop, come back. Oh, oh, they're already. There quick, we'll click. Let's do it. <laughs> Don't give them a chance to unready. No, oh, they're not going to be unready. It's all right. Uh, good energy, though. Good energy. Let's go. Woo! Match starting. Finally. Let's do it. About time. Yeah. All right. Bringing some of that football energy going. Yeah. Even though yeah. this uh, match might be a little tough for Phoenix Legion. Uphill battle. But you know what? Who cares? Let's see that energy brought. And here we are. We we started early today to mitigate any <laughs> any issues, technical issues. But... Wasn't our fault this time, chat. Was not our fault. We did everything right. It was Zinjo who got stuck in traffic. He needs to learn the right lanes. Come on, man. In your in your city, you gotta know what streets to take. Listen to your listen to your like daily traffic reporter, your local radio station, something, man. Come on, man. Now let's go. We're going into this match, and the teams are coming in. Solaris City dropping its rain, dropping frames like it's hot, and both teams hopefully are psyched that we're finally underway. And now, before real quick, let's drop into the mix. It doesn't look like we're going to be seeing much Lerms. Lizzie bringing a medium pulse laser, heavy Gauss rifle, um, uh, Annihilator, going for that medium range build. Stimrog, oh, jumping already to the wrong team. Jay-Z bringing the Fafnir no stalker, sadly enough. Five ER medium lasers, two heavy Gauss rifles. He's actually featuring this on his stream. 
and he was doing tons of damage on his stream. It'll be very interesting to see how that mech performs. Lerm God bringing ER medium laser, heavy gauss rifle, Fafner, another mech he was trying, an airwalker bringing heavy gauss rifle, medium pulse laser, annihilator, Burya bringing in a linebacker with medium pulse lasers and machine guns, I'm guessing to help the crit padding. Daru Wind also bringing a medium pulse laser, machine gun, linebacker. This time he has ammo in it, unlike Burya though. Interestingly enough, I guess Burya didn't prepare the right mech. Um, rip and uh Q-Bird bringing the phoenix hawk 2 which essentially acts as a makeshift light mech wolverine also bringing a phoenix hawk 2 which once again acts as a makeshift light mech now going over the phoenix legion side they're Sabraza. all in on the innies man are they yeah they are Shabraza bringing in ux on his mech and uh Oop, looks like we're making a mistake. The boss, the boss Akura bring in all UX. Cyclops bring in an LB10. So it looks like the Phoenix Legion is taking a more ballistic approach to their mechs, which is very interesting. Casablock bringing machine guns, heavy small lasers on his mislink. So Ren bringing Ultra 5s. So it's basically Laser Goss Vomit versus Daka. Yeah, and they've also got the two mislinks on the side of Phoenix Legion doing a bit of scouting. I think they've seen this Eon uh, group that's gone over to Epsi, but Eon's also got another split of, I think, four mechs? Yeah, four mechs. Kind of uh, nosing in around Theta, but uh, Kazblok still manages to get it kind of uncontested for the moment. Um, Phoenix Legion really grouped up in between these buildings. I don't know, maybe they're going to try and catch a 228 mech kind of out here. But we'll see. So far, no engagement. Uh, PHL, Phoenix Legion does have the cap lead, though, so solid start from them. Three three caps to two. You know, not huge, but... Oh, Jay-Z taking some fire in his Fafnir. Right now, um, basically, um, Phoenix Legion got a solid win because they were able to take Theta uncontested. And this is going to be a hard sought fight. Learn God taking some damage. 89%! Strike dropped! And it looked like it didn't really do that much to him. Just glance his armor. Jay-Z down to 94%. So right now, Eon Synergy is not doing great on the trades. Ren, however, is eating some damage in the Basakura. But they're taking advantage of the lanes, getting some trade fire in. Johnny Black up top along with a Ren in the Basakura. Uh, right now, they're all just laying down some Daka fire, trying to keep them from pushing in. And it's not stopping them. Wolverine, Cubert, Burya are all hugging the buildings, trying to get some close-range fire on Zinjo and Shabraza. Zinjo's getting beat to hell right now, 84%. He's eating fire like crazy, just swallowing those lasers and ballistics. Om nom 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 nom. Just eating them up for breakfast. Shabraza trying to back off along with a Ren, and it looks like they are losing control of Theta currently. Trades are not looking good. Lerm God is the lowest percentage mech, and it looks like Polycat's also going in for a flank. Lerm God down 68%, and it looks like he might be open. Yeah. Yes, his side torso is open from the rear along with the center torso, so things are not looking good. Polycat and Simrog trying to do some work. Yeah, PHL backing off this corner, but it might be a little too late. They've taken some serious damage on that initial Eon approach. Uh, Stimrog desperately clinging on with this Annihilator and Shabraza. We'll see if they can hold this corner, but it's not looking good. Simrog, interestingly, not in the light pilot. It's Casablock and uh, Polycat that are the lights, and they need to get involved in this action, and it looks like they are. They are attacking from the rear. They did eat some terrible damage from Lerm God. Those heavy boss rifles hurt. They hit like a truck, and right now, Stimrog was brought down by Jay-Z, and the roll begins, and now the dominoes fall. The avalanche comes. The tilt happens. Phoenix Legion lost five mechs in the span of five seconds in what it feels like, and even though they have the cat lead, it's not going to be much to stop, and Polycat trying to pull out. Johnny Black at the top with his boss occur is already dead, actually. Sorry about that. That's a bit of a glitch because I'm zooming in and out of the mechs. Qbert trying to chase down Polycat. Doesn't necessarily have that much more speed over them, but the Phoenix Legion, I believe, is faster. Polycat will quickly be a caught out and killed. Johnny Black uh, neutralized. Casablock also, I believe, neutralized. Oh, no, he isn't. He's at Sigma. And right now, it just looks like that uh, Phoenix Legion is just trying to scramble the, their two lights left, but I'm pretty sure Eon Synergy has this in the bag. Yeah, Polycat been completely disarmed. He's just trying to kind of bait shots and <laughs> live as long as he can. Meanwhile, the other mislinks case blog you know he's going doing some capping but i think it's it's just a little, a little too late not gonna be able to win with that strat case block case block case block i don't know how you say that name he's looks to be completely stripped of weapons as well lost both of his arms he might have some side torso lasers but that's just not gonna be enough Eon Synergy bringing the dominance they showed against um, RJF last week. Uh, they finished that deci decision 5-0. Had a couple 8-0 rolls in there. And while the mechs on Eon Synergy were definitely beat greatly, this is an 8-0 match. Decision, Eon Synergy. Yeah. 
Looking at the damage numbers, Eon putting in all the damage in their heaviest mix. Lizzie, Daenerys Walker, Jay-Z all doing well over 750 damage. Jay-Z not going to be shown up by Lizzie. Taking the top spot, 806 damage MVP. Lerm God, unfortunately, was not able to do a lot of damage because he was kind of the primary focus of the light flank by Polycat and Casablock. Um, they were really trying, just bugging the hell out of him. Flies to a poor guy just trying to cook his sausages. Qberg and Wolverine doing damage. Decent damage enough. Uh, Wolverine 167, but once again, he was on the flank. Hubert really diving into the action at 387. Bria and Deruwind only pulling around 200 of the linebackers, but they weren't really asked to do much. Meanwhile, on Phoenix Legion side, you have Stimrog and Zinjo trying to hold out as long as they can with those DPS heavy Annihilator 2As, but it just wasn't enough. The missed links led by Kaliback and Casablock weren't able to get much done, but Johnny Black from his high vantage point wasn't able to get much done either at 141. Aren pulling in respectable numbers at 400, but it just feels like that this was an occasion of being outthought and outfought. They managed to sneak the uh, Theta Cat point early. Uh, kudos to the Light Mech for doing that, but at the end of the day, it just wasn't enough. Eon Synergy just winning all their trades and dominating the Heavy v. Heavy fight, and that's what allowed them to just run roughshod, push through Theta, take advantage of their percentages, and clean the match up and win the day. Yeah, I think, I think one of the big big moments in that was having those two blood apps way up high um because of how the buildings on the inside of the theta area are you know they were able to be shot and shoot but most of the phl guys were were not they were kind of sitting on the outside and so when eon pushed in you know they had kind of free shots you know 6v2 or 8v2 on those two blood apps that were way up high and uh their teammates who were kind of outside of the choke just weren't able to do much but I want to go to, over to the map strap and kind of draw up what we saw. Of course, we can definitely do that while those teams are getting ready, just making sure that they are ready. They're definitely going to want to speed it along due to Zinjo's uh, unfortunate um, clash with traffic. But just a real quick recap. I hope you have the match strap up because I'm going to try and rapid fire through this. Uh, basically, Phoenix Legion moving all the way up to Theta, sending their light to Cap, setting up along this, uh, basically, I believe it's this Echo 4 Ridge. or Yeah, this Echo 4 Ridge. Meanwhile, Eon Synergy capping their points and moving up from Sigma in quick time. And basically, it was a fight to who can get to and establish positions at Theta. Now, as I said, uh, Phoenix Legion was the one that did cap Theta at first. Meanwhile, um, Phoenix Legion essentially capped Kappa and uh, Eon Synergy went for Epsilon. But at the end of the day, it was just a slugfest trade v. trade. You know, it was just rapid shots. Lots of 8C5 fire coming from Phoenix Legion. And meanwhile, on the side of Eon Synergy, lots of lasers and goss. Just tons of fire cannot be emphasized. All this blue and all this red is just the pure DPS coming from both sides. And it was just a slugfest between two great teams. But in the end, like Muhammad Ali to Joe Fraser, Eon Synergy laying the final blow in the rumble in the jungle. Uh, but it was definitely not a battle that was won easily per se. Yep. But let's get this show on the road. Let's. We're going to see next up Polar Highlands Domination. No lock-on weapons this time. Uh, we didn't see any last match. I think definitely uh, one of the kind of the... I, I should say this before we move on. Um, I think one of the interesting things that maybe surprised me a little bit is how how well the uh, heavy Goss kind of won out over the ballistic boats uh, on PHL side, you know. Uh, I think that... I think that just came down to the poking ability of Eon Synergy and the fact that they were able to rotate mechs in and out. Like, if you saw the percentages of Eon Synergy, a lot of them were down 40-50%. That tells me that they had a great rotational strategy going in and that they were basically able to duck in and out in order to mitigate the DPS advantage that the mechs um, from Phoenix Legion brought. So... It was just smart play by them, you know? They would go in, they would hit them with an alpha, and then they'd duck out. And at the same time, Phoenix Legion's high point mechs really couldn't take advantage of it. Like, you kind of saw Johnny Black and Aren fighting for space on those uh, top highways in Solaris City, and they weren't able to really utilize the full DPS potential of their UAC boats. And it just resulted in what we saw, lesser damage numbers. Like, you know, on paper, those mechs should be pouring out more damage 
but at the end of the day, it just didn't happen. Now, it could have been because of the positioning. It could have been because of the difference in shooting ability. But I honestly think that those differences aren't that significant. I think that it really did come down to the fact that maybe Johnny Black and Aran should have positioned differently. Or maybe that they should have split their team up. It's kind of like what we were talking about at the beginning of the cast, you know? When you're forcing all your mechs down in that one corridor, there's not much room to trade. There's not much room to get firing lanes. And so you're restricting the amount of actual DPS that your team has. Yeah, that's definitely true. You know, you got a lot of annihilators kind of sitting on the outside. Really, in those choke points, you can probably only fit two, maybe three. It's a real tight fit through at one time. And I think, yeah, Eon definitely took advantage, kind of sending their heavies in through the side. And they're, they they did split their, their group up when they went into the Theta region. They had they came in two entrances as opposed to the one that PHL was guarding. Mm-hmm. And it just goes to show that, like, I think that in the end, it's just... In the end, I just think Eon Synergy played it better with the hand they were dealt. Um, just looking back at the stream, once again, great rotations all across the board for uh, Eon Synergy, or Eon Tatos, as they like to be passionately called. Um, we have Phoenix Legion giving us a yes. Eon Synergy taking their sweet, sweet time getting their mechs ready. Yeah, yeah, and Eon making fun of PHL for a little bit of late start there, saying they were surprised there was a team less organized than Eon, but now Eon making us wait. So, uh, there's a phrase that I can't, can't think of right now that I was going to say, but oh well. So yeah, what do you think we'll see? No, no missiles, no lock-on missiles. We should stop predicting those for drop two and three. Oh, looks like both teams are ready. Let's just get yeah, in there. Yeah, looks like we're going to be getting in there, and we'll be able to rattle off the builds very quickly. Rapid-firing this. Not even going to count it down. Let's just go. No need for a countdown. We've already done our introductions. Eon, thankfully, giving us time to do that because they're a little sluggish. But like the Russian bear, they may move slow, but they go in for the kill. For sure, for sure. Let's see if either of these try full pounce you know like the bear it's slow it lumbers slow until it sees its prey then after that it goes into a wonderful beautiful gallop and then after that it chomps down on some delicious meat that delicious meat being the phoenix which is phoenix legion well hopefully maybe the phoenix will rise again <laughs> yeah take into the skies and just fly away and kite with some interesting strategies or something who knows mechs are coming in and we're going to start reading them off soon jay-z dropping a glhf i hope he means it gentleman and a scholar jay-z and don't worry jay-z beforehand i'm going to make sure i let you know that i'm just going to flip your teams because you guys don't care about seeing each other's builds which is great you're making my job easier for me jumping into the match uh what do we got Okay, so we've got Eon Synergy using Piranhas, which is something that I was hoping to see. I love the Piranha. It's a mech that I would argue is a little bit on the stronger side for light mechs. We have Qbert, ERPPC, Hunchback 2CA, and I'm going over to the wrong team. Jay-Z dropping ER Large Lasers on his Panther 9R as a long-range mech. Lizzy bringing a Mad Cat Mark II Death Strike with a large medium Gauss Rifle Vomit variation. Lurden God with a bunch of AC2s on his Night Guy or A, so he's definitely going to be poking from extreme ranges. Daenerys Walker Ultra AC2s on his Dragon 5N, the Proton Classic, as many people would refer to it as. Uh, Burya and the Piranha 1 loaded to the brim with machine guns. Uh, Daruin following suit with a similar build. Now looking over at Phoenix Legion. Shabraza bringing a linebacker fitted to the brim with medium pulse lasers. And then for the rest of their team, we got Zinjo and Casablock bringing a uh, small pulse laser and medium pulse laser variants. Zinjo bringing the Incubus 4. Casablock bringing the Vulcan. We've seen how effective those are when Imperial fought 228th in round 1. Wutzel Dussel also bringing a medium pulse laser Vulcan. Stimrog medium pulse laser Vulcan. Johnny Black also medium pulse laser linebacker. So it's easy to see that Phoenix Legion has kept their speed ratios the same. All of their mechs are moving at similar speeds, whereas we're seeing a bit more of a heavy light balance uh, more um, top weight balance. Yeah, heavy Eon light energy. split for Eon. Yeah, they've exactly. they've scouted these fast mechs on uh, PHL side, so we have to see what PHL decides to do with this. PHL seems to be content to just sit behind this ridge right now. I'm not sure that's the right decision, giving Eon time to kind of spread their lines and start picking angles. 
And not only that, but while all this is happening, Eon Synergy's mechs are getting great scouting, or Eon Tatos as they may like to be called, but it looks like that Phoenix Legion is starting to make their move. They're starting to egress some of their mechs around the circle to maybe try and hit the right flank of Eon Synergy's trading line, but Eon Synergy sees this, and they're rotating rather nicely with all their range, moving away while getting shots, um, strafing very well, basically kind of just playing this kind of dance with... Uh, Phoenix Legion's mechs, keeping them at bay and zoning them with long-range weapons while using what mobility they have to try and stay out of... keep them at arm's length. Seeing some strikes yeah. drop down right now, and uh, right now, Eon's lights are just kind of waiting for the actual engagement to happen. Toaster, what are you what are you seeing on this formation? I'm not P liking it really. Since PHL, the yeah, they were eating a lot of strikes there, but it looks like they're almost on this death strike. Uh, e but Eon, as I say that, you know, they've got a piranha in pulling Stimrog off the back. Looks like Stimrog is just going to be there to delay the Eon lights, and looks like Lizzie, death strike, first priority target for. Oh boy, and right now it looks like that the fight is happening. Uh, Phoenix Legion finally jumps on their first mech. They get a great leg, and li down goes Lizzie. Super quick. What a neutralization. Bury a self-destruct. So right now, Eon Synergy is already down. Two mechs. The ball is already evolving, and we're seeing mechs pounce on each other. Nightgire's leg. Lerm God's in a lot of trouble. He's dropped by Casablock, and the roll moves on. This time, Phoenix Legion is returning the favor. They're dropping mechs really quickly right now, and we're seeing this brawl evolve into something chaotic. Linebackers really can't do much to are trying to pull out when they can, but right now it's looking like the Piranhas are trying to salvage the drop, but Daruwin's really weak. He goes down in his Mislinks G. Four mechs only remain for Eon Synergy. Seven in total for Phoenix Legion, and right now it's just not looking good. Wutzel Dutzel brings down Qbert, Hunchback 2CA. Uh, Wolverine follows after Zinjo gets a nice shot on him. I believe that was some strike damage. Jay-Z gets neutralized by Polycat's Incubus, and right now it's just an Airwalker. All that's left, and he's already dead. Before I could even finish that sentence, quick, decisive match. Amazing execution by Phoenix Legion. Absolutely amazing. After that initial hesitation from the strikes, they said, you know what? Go. Yeah, it was a great push. They didn't, they, I think maybe they hesitated a little bit to start, but they picked a great line to get into Eon. Eon didn't quite receive that great, I think. I wanted to get a little more damage out of the, the Death Strike, but I don't know. What do you see from this scoreboard? What I see from the scoreboard is some of the greatest focus I've seen from a team in my life. These damage numbers are super low, and there's a reason why. Phoenix Legion went legs. That's all they shot at, and that's all they took out. Shabraza, Johnny Black doing 83 and 80 damage. Polycat, 169. The highest damage person is Stimrog at 326, and that's because he was embroiled in his own 1v1s. But you see from the Vulcans, the Incubus, Zinjo, Casablock, Wutzel Dutzel, that you're doing low damage because of the fact that they know exactly what they're shooting, and they take it down instantly. These damage numbers being low actually tells me that this team knew exactly what they wanted to do and they went in and executed it perfectly great great match from phoenix legion and now the game is even one to one yep but they're gonna have to do something different next drop right they used all their vulcans all their linebackers just in that one drop and two of their three incubuses so they're gonna have to shift things up um, yeah, well, let me switch these teams now just to get them out of the way, I guess, because, you know, Jay-Z likes this. All Good right. You, Jay -Z. I'll head over to the map strat. We'll talk about what we see. Please do. All right, so first things first. Uh, both teams, you know, just doing the usual... Oh, rip, wrong color. Both teams kind of doing the usual marching straight into Theta. Or the domination point, really. No, no big surprises there. Nothing else you can really do on this map. Uh, PHL, ah, ah. PHL kind of taking this line at the start, you know, kind of sitting on this side of the ridge. I guess probably just trying to figure out where Eon was going so that they could best plan their approach. Uh, Eon's lights, uh, they they went in the circle. They scouted it pretty quick, but they weren't ever. Uh, like last night in the 228 versus uh, Evil game, we really saw 228's lights kind of get in there and trip up the push of Evil, but that didn't happen this match. Um, PHL did a much better job of kind of sticking together, working through these valleys on the southern side of the map to get into I-10 pretty quick um, and kind of jump on the heavies and slower moving elements of Eon. Uh, Stimrog was turned around by the Eon Lights, but even then, you know, being 2v1'd, I believe, at least, um, he managed to stay alive for, I think, all, the entire match. 
and lived through that delaying the Eon lights and allowing e uh, PHL to get that easy quick pick on the Death Strike and then moved on to the Night Gear and it was just brilliant focus. Uh, Eon mechs dropping one by one and, you know, just this domino effect. You know, once you get that so much tonnage off the field with that 90 ton Mad Cat going down, it's pretty heavily swung in your favor. And you know what? It's worth noting that despite the extraordinary amount of damage that um, Phoenix Legion seemed, at least, that they were eating from their initial push over in this section, uh, I-9, I believe, in that crevice, they had no fear on this push. They immediately swooped around to Hotel 10, moved in as a unit. Simrog kind of assisting the back line a little bit by taking on a 2v1 in the Light Lance. But in either way, it was just an incredibly decisive maneuver, and the moment Phoenix Legion got into this aforementioned circle that you drew to represent Eon Synergy's main body, there was no hesitation and no fear. Just constant focus, constant firepower being brought on legs. I'm pretty sure that they didn't even shoot the side torsos, the center torsos, the arms they didn't even try to go for that they went for what made sense legs 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 and that's how they managed to kill each mech decisively because there was no pretense of changing focus fire there was no rotating in and out it was just a massive speed brawl with phoenix legion brilliantly weaving in and out of the match mechs rotating in and out but at the same time keeping their focus on one mechs not allowing eon synergy to rotate their mechs out yeah, it's just the hallmark of a very disciplined and uh, experienced comp team. You know, working together, yeah, we took some strike damage, but we're going in. Nobody's wussing out. You don't have people kind of breaking off doing their own thing. Um, and it, it paid off for them, right? They got that. They got those quick kills, great great leg focus on their part. Uh, good, good job identifying, you know, mad cat legs, often very stripped, especially by these high-level comp pilots. And, you know, it's... You can shield a leg against one mech, but you can't shield it against, like, eight. <laughs> it's also worth noting, watching a bit of the play-by-play, -play, that uh, Polycat actually got a key back shot on one of the lights, so that was just incredible aim. So Phoenix Legion definitely bringing back the skill level in their favor, showing that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with... Um, Eon Synergy, and I really hope that they can keep it up. Now, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, Phoenix Legion adopts a, um, if they adopt a speed brawl strategy similar to what they ran last time. Now, they're out of Vulcan, so they miss probably one of the, um, one of the more key aspects of that drop, but even still, it's worth noting that they might still be able to pull it off with certain replacement mechs. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you bring, though. They're out of Vulcans, and they're out of linebackers. Uh, maybe you bring, you know, some piranhas, I guess. Uh, I don't know, assassins are definitely a pretty popular choice, even though the 21's been nerfed a few times. Um, there, there's still some mechs out there. It's going to be, I think, maybe a little harder. Those linebackers are great tanks for those kind of pushes, especially when you can have three of them and kind of obfuscate your mechs just by virtue of having, you know, making calls harder because there are multiple, <laughs> multiple linebackers, right? And it's also worth noting that for Eon Synergy, it was much harder for them to rotate because that's the advantage of being the initiator in those pushes. You know, Eon Synergy can't really rotate out because it's their position that's getting invaded, not Phoenix Legion. And Phoenix Legion has the greater mobility. Yep, yep. And Phoenix Legion also didn't give them, you know, a chance to spread their lines very much. You know, it's basically Eon, Eon's heavier guys arrived and then they were attacked. So that's that's a very important part about those speed brawls. You know, you don't really want to wait to look for the perfect opportunity. You know, it's probably not going to misplay and just randomly wander too close. You got to kind of force the engagement yourself. And that's exactly what Phoenix Legion did. That was so brilliant. They forced the engagement. They forced it big time, and then you also had some mechs in the back kind of shading the lights, not allowing Eon Synergy to disrupt the push or their plans at all. It was just brilliant execution on the side of Phoenix Legion, but we all know that Eon Synergy isn't going to take this hit sitting down. They're going to get right back up, put their fists up in fighting stance, and get ready to throw some right hooks of their own. It's just a matter of what are they going to bring to this drop? How are they going to try and counter it? Yep, looks like both teams are ready, though, so let's get in there. Let's get in there. Launching drop three Polar Islands con domination, not conquest. I was about to say conquest. Absolutely not. It's domination. I'm hyped. One one teams even, and we're seeing some great EU play right now. Yeah, for sure. PHL showing they're no slouch. They might have lost last week, but 
they're here to win. They can maybe still pull it back with the dom if they can win a few more games off of Eon. You never know. Eon's a very tough team to win game again, win games against. So you know that in the standings for the upcoming match between Phoenix Legion and RJF, if they can pull some key wins against Eon Synergy, who RJF have shown to struggle against in the last week, since I don't believe they took a single drop off them, then it would be a boon to help put Phoenix Legion in striking distance to take first place in EU Div A. And if they keep up their momentum, I don't see why they can't. Yep, for sure. All right, so over here on Phoenix Legion, uh, what do we got? Or we whatever got, side let you're me on. Read it off to you. I am on Phoenix Legion's side. We are a mind meld right now. We are like the Borg Toaster. We got each other's mind synced up. Polycat, Misanthrop, bringing a combination of lasers to the action. A Ren bringing medium pulse laser. Crab, Casablock, bringing a Mislinks G with machine guns, heavy small lasers. Zinjos, medium pulse laser. Crab, 27B, Stimrog, Piranha 3. A combination of micro lasers and heavy small lasers. I can't wait to see what he's going to do with this mech. I love seeing Stimrog's light play. It's some of the most exciting light play I've ever seen. Seen. Crab 27B from Shabraza and uh, Johnny Black also bringing some ER large lasers in the Battlemaster 1G. I guess to provide some range support, uh, Polycat also bringing some lasers as well. And then after that, let's go over to Eon Synergy. We got Lizzie and the Mad Cat Mark 2D bringing Goss rifles and me. <laughs> ER medium and large lasers of the party. I'm talking too fast now. My tongue's getting tied. Sorry, folks. <clears throat> Jay-Z, Medium Pulse Laser, Vindicator. Uh, Lerm God also bringing some NER Large Laser Panther, so he's going to be trying to provide some range support. Denair Walker bringing the Dragon 5N again, a mech they can bring again since they only used it once, not twice in the last drop. Night Gear A from Daruwin, rocking 5 Ultra UAC-2s. Buria in the Mist Lynx G, the primary light mech from Eon Synergy Revealed. And Qbert bringing in a Mist Lynx G loaded to the brim with machine guns and heavy small lasers. And now I believe we have some small engagements with Toaster. You've been paying more attention to that than me what do we see yeah we got a little bit of scratch trade going on Bria and uh Qbert jumping over in their mislinks trying to see what they can see taking some damage from that uh battle master granted it's not at all significant at this point some strikes going out but neither of these teams going to be caught with their pants down they dodge them pretty efficiently it's worth noting right now that the light mechs on Eon Synergy's side are kind of losing their trades a little bit, but this can go either way. As seen when Stimrog took a little bit of a laser alpha from Lerm God and his Panther 9-4. Didn't do much, but 96% can be a big dip can be a big difference in these lighter mechs. Buria down to 91%, and right now you are correct. It looks like it's just scratch damage, but scratch damage on light mechs matters. You don't want a light mech to take too, too much damage, especially in the beginning stages of the fight, because the lights are going to be asked to close things out in the end normally. Uh, we have some basically some jump jetting going over for Phoenix Legion, and interestingly enough, the Crab 27Bs are being held back even though they are medium range crabs these crabs do not have any sort of long range weaponry but they're hanging back i'm wondering if phoenix legion is going to attempt to try and ambush here yeah i think they just maybe trying to hold them back try and ambush keep them in this very low ground so it's harder for eon to get angles on them but johnny black is kind of eating a lot of damage here down to 90 percent um but that being said burya Burya must have got hit by a strike. He's at 58% in his mislinks. He is not doing too hot. And right now, Cuber and Lermgod are smartly about to destroy one of the generators to kind of even up the score between Eon Synergy and Phoenix Legion. Phoenix Legion times difference was a very big factor in causing them to hold back their crabs. But now that that time difference has changed and now they're tied at one minute for holding the cap point down, we might see some movement from the crabs of Phoenix Legion, although it does look like that they're sticking to their guns and they're staying put, which could be the smarter decision. You're right, Burry is down to 58%, and I do think it's a strike because it looks like it's all over the place. Looking at his mech... Um, a lot, interestingly enough, his front armor is still around orange. It's mainly from the back where he's really screwed up. Uh, his uh, so rear side torsos are all kinds of messed up at orange and red. His rear center torso is orange. Basically, he's pretty much one shot if a mech manages to get behind him. But Johnny Black is not in a better position. He just ate some serious damage that I unfortunately didn't even see. 66%, oh, yeah. and a lot of it is focused in that right torso. It which holds most Phoenix of Legion is not winning these trades. They need to do something and quick. Jay-Z had a little bit of a scuffle with some of the 
uh, Phoenix Legion lights in the back, but it looks like the Phoenix Legion lights haven't really committed yet. Eon. It looks like the crabs, though, are starting to commit a little bit. They managed to catch Wolverine with his pants down somewhat, but it wasn't enough. And now Eon Synergy knows about the medium range crabs. This does not look good for Phoenix Legion. Now that Eon Synergy has figured out that these crabs are medium range and that there's not a lot of long range, it gives Eon Synergy the option to sit back, occupy space, and zone out the light mechs from Phoenix Legion, knowing that they're not going to have much, if any, fire support. And right now, Phoenix Legion's mechs are down very high percentages. Johnny Black, 62%. Reeling, 61%. He's just eating damage right now in his Battle Master. Both his side torsos are suffering greatly, and Misanthrop is not doing much better in his Hellbringer VI, and we saw Lizzie take him down right then and there. Down one mech, Phoenix Legion, and right now things are just not looking good for them. Yeah, that's a lot of tonnage. They need to mobilize the crabs, guys. Mobilize the crabs. Get them in there. They gotta do something. You got... Too many fresh mechs, you're losing these trades. Johnny Black maybe needed to slow roll things a little bit, let these crabs get in position, try and put some pressure on Eon. But that being said, they're going in. Sinjo is trying to lead the pack, but this might not be the best thing since he's the weakest mech. He needed to be in the back, not leading the push. He's getting grilled by the machine guns. They managed to get the kill on the... Um, they managed to get the kill on Jay-Z and the Vindicator, but at the same time, uh, Eon trades it mech for mech. Zinjo kills Burya, so right now it's even 2-2. Percentages are still not looking good, though. The Hellbringer and the Crab 27B on Zinjo are both weak. Castle Block's down. He's already down. Lizzie and Wolverine get subsequent kills immediately after each other. Oren, however, manages to take down Lizzie. 4-3 in favor of Eon Synergy. Qbert manages to kill Polycat and her Piranha 3. That's a big blow. Pir Polycat really doing work in her light mech. Shabraza kills Daruwin. The match is still close but not too close as now they're up two mechs before I could even get a word out. Eonis Energy manages to kill another mech and they're on top. Yeah, I mean, it's two, Piranhas didn't, did a lot of work. Wolverine and Cubert, uh, it seemed like just were kind of ignored in favor of PHL killing the heavier aspects of Eon. I'm not sure that was the right decision, but... Who am I Very to say? interesting interview question coming up on what Phoenix Legion hope to do with this cra with these crabs. But even with the unfavorable situation that they were in, this was still a good fight. Uh, Learn God Wolverine were practically almost dead, and the only fresh person on this team was Qbert, who managed to just kind of get behind the rotation. Vindicator no brick decision for Phoenix Legion. Yep, Vindicator brick worked. No arm for you. But honestly, given given how Johnny Black was doing on his trades, I think that turned out pretty well, all things considered, for PHL. They managed four kills and against a team like Ian. That's no small feat. We're seeing the damage numbers. Jay-Z kind of got evaporated in his Vindicator 1R. Didn't do much, but he definitely tanked, and that's one thing the Vindicator is very good at doing. Burya got focused a little early and singled out and killed. Daruin not putting out much in his Night Gyre, but the rest of the team performed spectacularly. Lerm God and Qbert doing the most damage. Qbert putting in the maximum level work in his Miss Lynx G. Let me tell you something. When components are open, those machine guns can just rack up the damage numbers, rack up the crit damage, and just send mechs to their maker quicker than you can say, ah, I'm dead, someone help me over your comms. Lerm God, Daenerys Walker also pulling in good damage, as I said. Lerm God's 482, Daenerys Walker's 458. Over on Phoenix Legion side, um, the Mislinks G, Casablock didn't do much. Zinjo and his crab didn't get much involved either. He was focused early. And the crabs overall and the Piranha and the Battlemaster, they all had similar damage numbers, but the damage numbers were pretty low. There just wasn't enough done in order to try and neutralize Eon Synergy's trade mechs or try to stop and stymie their light push. Yeah, I think they just need to get those crabs in there a little little earlier, have Johnny Black slow down his trade. You know, you can hide a little bit more. Yeah, it's going to hurt because Eon's going to take that time to reposition, but losing one mech before you've really engaged half your force is, is no bueno. Mm-hmm. And it, and it showed, you know, it really did show that the trade mech was kind of uh, neutralized. It's, um... It, it, it's unfortunate because we really wanted to see something kind of invented, but Eon Synergy at no point took the bait. And once again, this comes down to the experience that these teams bring. You know, Eon Synergy, they scout out the area. They know that there's only a couple of trade mechs. They only see a few lights. They're probably thinking in their heads, we, we see five mechs right now. Where are the other three? What's going yeah. on here? Should we move? And they didn't. They intelligently destroyed generators to reset the clock rather than being baited by the time change. They intelligently positioned themselves 
themselves so that way they wouldn't end up in the backfield of Phoenix Legion's original starting position worrying that there might be a presence there because they can only account for five mechs at any time. If the other three aren't around, then it's better to take a defensive stance and fall for a trap. And what we're seeing is that, you know, at the end of the day... Um, the more disciplined team won, and also the fact that Eon Synergy was really laying down the pain with their strikes, they were really laying down the pain with their longer range capacity and their ability to trade, and it goes to show that, you know, despite the original push strategy that Phoenix Legion ran to great success in Drop 2, this time they tried to pull out another trump card, and Eon Synergy didn't fall for it. Perhaps there was more Phoenix Legion could have done, maybe they could have put more pressure on with their light mechs, maybe they could have just moved the crabs up early, or maybe, um, in the end, Phoenix Legion was just doing this to conserve mechs for later drops, like conserve precious medium mechs, so that way they don't waste uh, mechs like, say, the Vulcan or waste another valuable medium on a drop that they really don't care much about. Maybe that's what they're thinking. Yeah. But either way, it turned out that in the end, uh, Phoenix Legion lost the drop, and Eon Synergy's up 2-1. Yep. I've got the map ban up. I'll just kind of go over what, what I saw happen at least. You mean the map strat? We can pull or the, it up. The map strat, yeah, not the map ban. Haha, -ha. so... Phoenix Legion kind of, they, they marched in, they got their crabs, I believe they were kind of down out of the circle. It was either H10 or H9, I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's so hard to tell. But they, they had their crabs sitting in that really low valley to where I think I think their main goal was to just avoid getting traded on while their Battlemaster and Hellbringer kind of worked the this long ridge line, kind of going up and down it, trying to get some trades in. I think trying probably to get Eon to encroach, maybe Eon, you know, their goal is to say who Eon sees were kind of low maybe they'll kind of push up to secure these kills eon did did encroach some they kind of pushed up to i8 i9 and j9 but they just never got quite close enough for those crabs to easily be able to push the main eon body and what what ended up happening was uh the the phoenix legion crabs they eventually pushed over by alpha but their first engagement was against, I think, a panther, and I don't know, maybe it was a hunchback, or uh, there was a piranha over there. And that's not really a, a primary target that you want to go after, you know, off the bat. You really want to get in on the mad cat and uh, dragon like they did the previous match. And also, you know, Phoenix Legion sent some lights around the back, but it seems like Jay-Z was just there in his Vindicator to tank that push and kind of <laughs> slow them down as much as he could, and <laughs> He seemed pretty happy about it with his all chatting and at the end of the match. Definitely. Jay-Z slowed down the push. He might have been the low-key MVP of this match because he helped make sure that Eon Synergy did not fall for the same kind of rapid speed brawl push that Phoenix Legion executed to perfect to perfection last drop in drop two. But I think what's more important is the fact that just Eon Synergy showed a lot of discipline and they weren't going to play NASCAR or fall into any of Le Phoenix Legion's tricks. And it was something that, you know, we normally don't see a lot of teams exercise. A lot of teams, they like to rotate, they like to use their mobility, and they like to go in without all the scouting information. Eon Synergy did not do that. They were extremely well disciplined and you know what they really needed to be because this match was by all means very close looking at the percentages as i said the only mech that was over 65 percent was cuber every other mech on eon synergy was beat so think about if they did fall for that crab put drop think about if they did fall for the trick it would have been disastrous it yeah. would have ended terribly, and Phoenix Legion would be up 2-1. But right now, Eon Synergy is showing exactly why they are the world champions right now in MechWarrior Online. Yeah, those, those crabs, they tanked a lot. I mean, I think that's the main purpose of those things. The medium pulses, they just kind of do pretty decent damage over a long period of time, and because of their hitboxes and their quirks, they can just absorb a lot of fire on that from those mechs. But now we're on to Rubelite, Rubelite, Rubelite. Some some heavier drops uh, for anyone who doesn't know. These are the tonnages and rules from World Championships last year. So I'm going to be interesting to see how how they uh, how they adapt to not having to play stock IS mechs and a restricted pool of stock IS mechs to that end. I think uh, I'm going to call it now. I think we're going to see ATMs. ATMs. What what ATM mech? Do you think uh, they'll go all in on like? ATM night gears or night gear or an ATM huntsman. I don't know if they're going to go all in, but I have a feeling we're going to see some ATM mechs. Yeah, I think this map is pretty good for it. You know, jump jet mechs are very strong with all the different levels on this map. Just kind of 
by virtue of how it's laid out and you know with all the all the pop targeting that you can do atms are very strong hard to pin down those huntsmen hard to close in on them if you're a light but you know we'll see that's always your atm next worst nightmare having some piranha run at you and he gets in 90 meters and you're like well i'm slower than him so i'm never getting away rip me i guess i'll start shooting this other guy while he gnaws off my legs and you know what? If there is a light lance composition that can do it, I'm not sure if Stimrog's going to be in the lights, but Polycat also is a very aggressive light pilot, and she's shown that by bleeding these pushes and being in the forefront of all these attacks, and she's very good at rotating in and out. Like, you know, she's definitely making a case for herself to be one of the better pilots, if not one of the best pilots in um, EU right now, and she's really showing up beyond synergy with some strong performances. Um, if a combination of Polycat and Stimrog, who also plays hyper-aggressive light play and knows how to do it to the best of his ability is able to get on those ATM mechs if there are any not saying there are going to be any but if there well I am saying that there are going to be a few but if there are any which I think there will be you'll be more than happy to call me out on that if I'm wrong Toaster but I think <laughs> there will be there no will I, be. I agree I think there will definitely be some ATM mechs if not this drop definitely the next drop I think they're just so strong even on Alpine we saw Yesterday, you know, 228 bring in ATMs on Alpine. Alp ATMs are more of your kind of short to mid range weapons, really. You don't want to be firing them in the one damage range. You want to be firing them where they do two, three damage a missile. So if we saw them there, I, I have to believe we'll see them here. And, you know, Jay Z and how, they, how some of these comp pilots have been talking about lock on weapons and the current state of the balance, I, I think they'd be. Either they're just debating us with all this talk, or we're going to see some luck on some narcs, maybe even. Yeah, well, debating is a very true possibility because comp teams like to keep their strategies close to their chest. They generally don't like streamers calling out their strategies a little early, even though um, mixed results, depending on the streamer, definitely. I know that we probably missed some calls, and we've definitely seen some strategies miss our eye, but the speed brawl is definitely something that was really fun to see, and I hope that we see Phoenix Legion think outside the box. That's why I think that they're going to bring ATMs. I think they're going, going to try some very cheeky strategies with ATMs, change their elevation with vertical style, mechs might throw in some traders as well and then maybe use the strength of their light lance to limit the um to limit the possible the trading possibilities that eon synergy would normally go for limit the trading lanes that eon synergy would normally try to occupy throughout this match yeah i've definitely been very impressed by the light play from polycat and stimrog <laughs> this match uh they've been they've been holding their own against these eon lights and well, now. <laughs> just, a, just a note, though, Simrog has mainly been fulfilling the role of an assault in drop one, and he has been kind of, you know, he's been kind of iffy in the lights. Um, he hasn't, he wasn't really in a light drop two, I believe. He was. Nah, he was. Drop he was three, in a bulk in drop two. Yeah, I guess that can count as a. I, I count that as a light. That's a light. <laughs> But even still, you know, shout out to the rest of the team. Like, Aren seems to be the go-to guy for these pushes, and Zinjo's even holding him, holding his own, too. I can see why Phoenix Legion would hold the match for 20 minutes just to make sure that he could get out of his traffic predicament because he isn't... He's holding his own, and once again, these are high-level pilots. This is a high-level team. This is currently the best team in all of MechWarrior Online right now. Phoenix Legion is going up against the Juggernaut the yep. juggernaut and you can't stop the juggernaut normally you're not supposed to stop the juggernaut he just runs through walls he tramples you down there's nothing you can do but phoenix legion has an answer or hope we hope that they have an answer we for this so. drop Kras and right now lizzie saying hardock is in austria which is a shame he should be in the virtual world of mechware online shout out to hardock miss you buddy But yeah, looking at looking at kills, if my numbers are correct, um, Phoenix Legion they've only they've won one of the two drops, and they have twelve total kills to Eon seventeen. So if you look at kills, like this is this is an incredibly close match. You know, Phoenix Legion not going down without a fight. They've done some serious damage to the mechs of Eon. 
Interestingly yeah. enough, if Phoenix Legion didn't get blanked in the first match, they might actually have a case to be ahead right now, which is how close this match was. The um, 8-0 decision on the first map was extremely unfortunate, and it's, what, and it's what's allowing Eon Synergy to barely scrape ahead. Phoenix Legion is going to have to pull out some extra stops if they want to win this. Yep, yep. Eight, Phoenix Legion got 8 0 on first drop, but then they 8 one Eon right back on drop 2, so they're, they're putting honestly... up a fight for sure. I honestly think that if Phoenix Legion can find a way to mix up their Light Lance a little bit, throw in an ATM Night Gear, an ATM Huntsman here or there, maybe find a way to catch Eon Synergy off balance, off their trade game, maybe have a bit of a speed brawl thrown in to try and hit one of the flanks, or try and figure out a cap rotation similar to Tourmaline, since even though Rubelite isn't as big as Tourmaline, you can achieve similar effects, especially since Kappa and Epsilon are so far away from the main action of Theta, that we might be able to see Phoenix Legion pull out a win. But it feels like that when Phoenix Legion is at their most inventive, that they are able to win. But the thing is, is that they can't get too cheeky. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes when you get a little too cheeky, you get a little throwy, right? But yeah, Rubelite. It's interesting. It's, you're right. It's not as big as Tourmaline, but there are like a lot of those side points. They're just very hard to watch. You can't really control the map, the center of the map, and the main sight lines, and control those side points very easily. You got to kind of split your mechs up maybe to do it. And there's some interesting little, very long pathways if you want to really go around the outside edge of the map and avoid being seen. I know I've had uh, some misfortune in some uh, comp practices playing a Warhawk. I had some lights must have decided to go all the way around the edge of the map and showed up right behind me. Almost killed me, but not, but not quite. Not quite indeed. And um, on a note for that, like, uh, just... Uh-oh, Toaster, wait. Um, you might want to do a quick mic check. Uh, apparently hello, hello. saying your mic is toast. Is my mic toast? I don't know. Oh, uh, rip it me. It fine to me. I'm not sure what chat's hearing, but I'm hearing something that's um, perfectly okay. I am occasionally getting some drops on OBS, it looks like. It's not uh, bad right now. It might might have just been one of those drops coincided with me talking. Rip. Oh, well. rip a Keep us pepperonis. posted, chat. Not a big I'm deal. I'm sure Kraz will at me in Discord if it gets awful. Kraz ats everyone in Discord. That's his specialty. Kraz is like the overbearing father trying to make sure we all do well, and we love him for it. He's just trying to be a good league admin, you know? I think he's doing a good job so far. Right now, at least, he's doing a good job. Beyond Synergy is going to have some great... having some great matches with Phoenix Legion. And on top of it tonight, the premier match... Black Omen versus Imperial, a rematch between two teams that met up in the WC. Black Omen made up of pieces of JGX, also with a little assistance from Eon and 228. And we're going to see that match tonight, 10 o'clock, 1030, I believe, actually. I'm very yeah, sorry. 1030 10 here at MWO Leagues. Right here on this MWO League channel, and it's going to be casted by the gro the godfather of all MWO shoutcasters, Bandit B17. Right now, I wish that I could give him a round of applause, but unfortunately, my finger is glued to this push to talk button. <laughs> just picture me doing it in my head, and you know everything is good. You know, you know one thing I was just thinking of though. Jay Z's in this match, but we haven't seen a single stalker. And I am I'm very disappointed. So I like I feel I have to mention that. Um Jay Z, if you're watching this back later, shame on you, sir. But looks like both teams are ready. We're connecting. And we're launching right now because we're getting ridiculed. Which oh, is cute. yeah. And I'm not radio casting. Hopefully you're not radio casting, I, otherwise I'm gonna have to ridicule you. The the only radio cast I believe I've done this season is I radio casted part of a map strat. You know what? That's good. That's, let's keep it that way. Yes, yes. Let's try. Try our Once best. It'll be, it'll be back to the basement of shame for you. Or the, the toaster factory of shame. I'm not... I don't know where toaster ovens come from. I'm not like toaster oven Jesus, so... They're actually grown on trees. I don't know if you'll believe that, but they are. Interesting fun fact. I will keep that in mind. I'll probably bring it up when I get drunk at a bar or something next time. And now... The match is starting. Mechs are loading in. Dropship's about to make an appearance, and we'll be going through the mech builds shortly. Um, 
Actually, Zinja and Polycat are saying, hold, excuse me, people. It looks like we're having some technical difficulties. The Nairwalker. Oh, goodness. People getting a bit on edge here. Maybe they're just too excited for that EMP Black Omen game. I know I am. I'm, I'm going to be watching that in chat. Um, I'm, I, I, I don't know that there will be giveaways, but I'd wager if there are giveaways, there's a good chance they'll be in that match. Even if there are giveaways, we have to give a shout out to the fact that Bandit B17 and MDM0, the original champs of comp shoutcasting, will be joining us again. It's always nice to see them back, and it's always nice to get them involved in the competitive scene because they do have a lot of experience in this. They've worked on a professional level. I believe Bandit's also worked with um, some of the PUBG shoutcasts in Ozom. So he brings a lot of experience to the table, and it's something that viewers are going to enjoy. So as I said in the chat, hopefully everyone gives them a round of applause and they faked what do you they're know? faking he reconnected hashtag mind games hey chat you love waiting don't you lizzie bringing some of that russian f fury to the table getting all sorts of angry and this match is underway we currently have phoenix legion and eon synergy moving for their cap points and now as they're capping right now let's go through their builds castle black <clears throat> Excuse me. Castle Block bringing in a Javelin 11A with seven medium lasers. Very good, strong build. And I accidentally picked the wrong mech. Let's try this again. Shabraza bringing uh, UAC-10, UAC-5s in his Mad Cat Mark IIb. A Ren bringing Ultra AC-2s with the Sun Spider A, which is going to be interesting since that mech, I believe, is a little bit bigger than its armor and tonnage would normally say. Stimrog bringing a Javelin 11A with seven medium lasers as well. I really like this pick since the Javelin's great at using its hitboxes to its advantage. Zinjo's bringing more Daka. Johnny Black, Daka. So once again, it's a Daka deck on the side of phoenix legion eon synergy bringing similar mechs jay-z unfortunately not bringing a stalker i'm very sad we'll have to give him some some well-earned criticism on that mad cat mark 2b though very well outfitted ultra fives and ultra tens case of block taking or being shot at not taking any fire yet on theta but he manages to get the cap and get out looks like uh eon instead of going attempting to contest theta they've sent their guys around to sigma and they're headed in with uh, two wolfhounds and two assassins this is a very dangerous hit squad stimrog scouts him out though and he's bailing quick as his little legs will take him and it's worth noting that the rest of the uh, Eon Synergy deck is Daka as well. So this is going to be a Daka v. Daka shootout. DPS is going to be the name of the game here, and it's going to be whoever has the best um, accuracy in this fight. Misanthrop getting some shots down in his... Case block getting jumped here over on the side by Breya, Dered, and Wolverine. Uh, he should have seen that coming. Oh, and he gets legged. He's legged immediately. Oh, that's not good. Being down a light this early in the game of the g is not the how you win the game. Breya getting a quick pick on Casablock, and right now things are uphill from here for phoenix legion they need to be able to recover this but right now it looks like that stimrog is i mean sorry polycat is on the run things are not looking good and phoenix legion is saying go 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 they're focusing on denier walker he's down 57 percent buria knocks out Shabrazo though who was leading the push and denier walker wisely manages to rotate out behind the pillars a little bit to get some cover meanwhile the rest of phoenix legion is trying to pour in shots lerm got down 60 percent phoenix legion trying to lay down the pain but v on synergy kudos to them they are rotating in and out behind the cover excellently direct goes the faster picks up a kick pick on johnny black zinjo down 54 percent he is unable to find cover a wren also getting hit by lizzie and the dragon 5n and the name of the game is is that from the position that phoenix legion pushed from there isn't enough cover and it's showing cubert knocks out zinjo to red goes the faster knockdown polycat jay-z destroys a rend and it's just two mechs left for phoenix legion and it's not going well missing top 59 percent stimrog 56 and simrog's legged actually in the middle of their firing line and he goes down misanthrop's all that's left but he's gonna follow soon and it's over ggs eon synergy Good push to Nerit Walker in his, I believe, did, I don't know if you had a chance to check his build, but I believe he was 4 Rack 2 Slepnir, of all things. I'm not seeing that build too much. Uh, yes, he was. Daco, he docked away, but the best thing to note was how Denier managed to pull out of that engagement very quickly. He did a lot of strong upfront damage, 361 at the beginning of the fight, but the moment his percentages went down, he rotated out immediately. Casablock, unfortunately, the guy who got picked very early and set his team backward by 
only doing four damage, which is understandable since he got legged. The hit squad you mentioned from Eon Synergy was, I would say, definitely the one that set the tone to help win this game. Jay-Z, Lerm God doing similar damage numbers, 557 for Jay-Z, 531 from Lerm God, 435 from Lizzie. Denario only doing 361 because he had to rotate out. Dered goes the faster, leading the hit squad with 284 damage, with Burry and Kubert doing 264 and 261 respectively. Stimrog actually pulled decent numbers along with Polycat and a Along with Polycat, Polycat only did 165, Stinrog did almost 400, Zinjo, the MVP of Phoenix Legion at 409, but the name of the game is that Phoenix Legion unfortunately just pushed from a position that they couldn't rotate out of or do anything else with. There wasn't enough cover to be able to utilize, and they weren't able to just go in on uh, Phoenix Legion because of the fact that... Phoenix Legion had the better, not Phoenix Legion, Phoenix Legion wasn't able to go on Eon Synergy, I'm sorry chat, excuse my language, but because of the fact that Eon Synergy had the better cover, they had the better position. The way Phoenix Legion was pushing was that sure, they were pushing from higher terrain, but the place that they were pushing from had no cover in order to better utilize their stance, yeah, so they, they couldn't rotate out, and if they dropped down, then they would be removed from the fight completely, and then they might as well be a dead mech in that situation. Yeah, pushing down that ramp, you know, I, there was one point where I saw they were kind of just one behind the other. Only the first guy can shoot. The rest of you are just kind of dead weight, eat, sitting there to eat bullets that maybe slip past the front guy. It was, it was not the greatest place to push out of. And unfortunately, you're right. They can't jump drop down because of where Eon was. It just takes you out of the fight for a little bit too long. And, you know, definitely uh, Daener Walker. I, was Daener Walker in the slip near? He's doing a brilliant job of, you know, tanking all that damage at the start, but still managing to pull himself behind that giant tourmaline kind of thing and, you know, survive. Probably after he'd already just finished jamming all of his racks. We want to go over to the map strat and we can talk about what we saw, kind of draw it up. Yes, we can, and yes, we will. So what we saw was that, um, I actually, where did Casablanca get picked? Because I unfortunately missed that opportunity, which is a shame on me scenario, especially since that was just a great light play situation. But so I believe Casablanca, he around... yeah, he he was up here originally. Ugh. Up here on this walkway originally, but then he eventually dropped down and just was not able to outrun the Eon mechs who kind of followed him out into this open area. They, I almost feel Eon mechs almost overcommitted into this open ground, kind of around E5, but you know the rest of Eon, their heavier mechs, kind of pushed over Theta and were there to back him up as soon as those assassins started taking fire. And plus the fact is they're assassins, so they're pretty tanky while on the move. Um... The hitboxes definitely work to their advantage because, of, and the jump jets and mobility also work to their advantage. I believe that um, in discussing 1v1s, one of the strengths of the assassin was that um, it essentially uh, allows its uh, maneuverability to basically act as kind of like a lag shield. I remember Silken in D5, his favorite mech was the Assassin because he was able to utilize it for that strength. And having watched the VOD, it looks like Casablanca got picked somewhere around here at Echo 5. And then from there, the rest of the... Uh, oh, am I looking at the, the wrong side? Of... Oh, no. Um, no, I'm sorry. It might be Fox 5 right yeah, now. Yeah, it is, it was sure. Fox 5. But the main engagement that happened, and this was the name of the game, was that um, Phoenix Legion basically moved their mechs and pushed down this area... Oh no, I'm sorry, push down this area and no, that other side. be the big mistake. What? Phoenix oh, Legion, yeah. their main body was up E five while Stimrog Stimrog and the Javelins kinda were E four, F five at the start while T two eight kinda came up from Epsi. You are right. I'm getting my sides up, and that's partially because these matches are going by so fast and so crazy that I'm getting a case of whiplash just watching them. Yep. But you are correct. Um, right now, it is the Echo 5. Phoenix Legion tried to push down this area here, and basically what Eon Synergy did, and it was actually kind of brilliant, was that you kind of had Daener hide behind this huge tourmaline here. You had the rest of the Eon Synergy mechs fan out in a conclave covering the stairs, and it was probably the best form conclave that you could ever get in that situation. And, of course, course phoenix legion there's no cover in this area at all like there's nowhere they can hide the only way that they'd ever actually be able to rotate is if they drop down into these corridors credit to them they didn't they stuck to their guns and they tried to push yeah yeah i think they needed to have maybe one guy you know sitting up on echo four along with stimrog stimrog was up there doing what he could with his javelin but you know he just doesn't have the firepower to really deal with 
those Eon assaults like by all by himself. I think there was a little bit of a pilot error there with Case Block. I, I'm sure Stimrog saw the, the mechs coming from Epsilon, Epsilon. They should have seen that, oh, Epsilon's been capped and awfully quickly. Uh, Case Block probably just got a little too close. Maybe they did assumed they wouldn't push straight up there onto the Javelins, but definitely something maybe live and learn. Yep, live and learn. And you know what? It's a credit to Dered, his superior scouting and the organization of that Light Lance, along with the coordination that they have, Buria, Qbert, everyone that was involved in that push. They basically took advantage of Casablock and took him back to the woodshed, shot him in the back with two perfectly placed shotgun shells and ended him completely. Looks like both teams are ready, though. So we, we've been proved wrong again. Uh, no ATMs that match, no LERMs. Uh, shame on us. And no Stalkers. Uh, shame on Jay. Shame on Jay-Z indeed. And you know what? I guess I'm eating it. Eh, but I don't care. I thought that we'd see ATMs in this drop. I was disappointed. Shame on you guys. You should be bringing ATMs. Well, actually don't, because it's going to ruin light play a little bit. But, you know, that's a discussion for another day. Just you just gotta hope they don't one shot you while you're trying to close, right? That's that's the entire light goal against an ATM mech. Don't get one shot and then get in min range. Manka S. <laughs> oh, we got a sec sec from Denair Walker. It looks like Eon's not actually ready. They are debating us once again. But yeah, flip flip teams or teams are switching sides this time. Uh, we got. Eon on Team 1. I'd say Team 1 does probably have a little bit better trading area with that E4 kind of much wider ledge than what uh, Team 2 has on the other side. Team 2 has, I think, a higher position, but it's a very narrow ledge. Not really much cover for more than maybe one, one, maybe two mechs if you really are willing to squeeze in together. And So we'll see All if right. we see. And we are launching... Will we see more DACA? I think both teams have to be running out of, uh, you know, ballistic boats at this point. So maybe, maybe lock-on missiles. I don't know. P Chat's going to think I like lock-on weapons at this point. I, uh... You do like lock-on weapons. You're a dirty lock-on weapon. You are dirty pro lock-on weapons, Toaster. Why do you hate light mix? Tell me, why? They, they hurt my direwolf. They hurt my direwolf, sir. If they touch your direwolf in the wrong place, you know what? That's on you. You need to position better. Yeah, it's that's true. Mix. Just just give me Gauss confidence. PPCs back, game. Well, I... That's... I... Well... Okay, okay. What, what do we got out there as far as Mexico here? Chris does have his head on the swivel. He might be listening to the community now. We might see some... We might see some passing balance changes in the future, but right now it looks like Eon Synergy Cubert in the Vulcan 5T, so it looks like Eon Synergy's turn to bring the Vulcans to the action. Uh, Dered goes to Fasta, uh, everyone's favorite light, light pilot in the Wolfhound 2. Uh, Buria also bringing the Vulcan 5T, medium pulse lasers. Denair Walker bringing uh, one Ultra AC2 and five AC2s in the Night Guy Prime. Lizzie and the Dire Wolf bringing a boatload. Eight AC2s. That is quite a load. Jay Z bringing four ER large lasers in his Hellbringer. Qbert, once again, Vulcan already covered him. And now we will move on to Phoenix Legion. Misanthrop's going to be pop sniping in his uh, PPC Summoner. And from what we're seeing as well, Shabraza also bringing Pop Sniping in his ERPPC Summoner. Aren bringing Daka in the Mad Cat Mark II B. Misanthrop, ERPPC Summoner again. Zinjo, Daka with a combination of lasers. Johnny Black bringing four Streak Sixes with the Kentaro. This is going to be interesting. They're going to try right. and neutralize. All, all that being said, we got a bit of an engagement here on Theta. Dered trying to hold this cap off from the uh, PHL Lights. But Dered taking a massive strike and some real bad burns from Stimrog and these three oh, wolfhounds of. You're right. I'm sorry. I missed it. Look at that. Oh my God. What has? What did? What was damaged? I oh, believe a bit of everything. Goodness. He he just kind of eating trades, trying to keep this His cap from flipping. red armor and orange internals. Lizzie Lizzie complaining, Lizzie complaining, flaming to red. Flaming to red, definitely. Why are our mechs suiciding at the start? Dare, 
Durant hurt CT then. Stimrock trying to glean whatever information he can. Stimrock took a little damage and his wolf found 1A as well, but the damage wasn't really that impactful. Uh, his armor is just orange. Uh, Durant eating some more damage, trying to flip the point. He neutralizes it at least, but loses an arm. Eon Synergy is currently on top for the cap lead, and right now it looks like Eon Synergy and Phoenix Legion are trying to do this very delicate tap dance. But Chabraza and his summoners also eating poor trades as well, taking some damage, 75%. Stimrog down 68, but I believe Stimrog's basically only lost much of his arms. Yes, much of that damage is in his arms and spread throughout his mech, so it's not completely terrible for Stimrog, and right now Phoenix Legion is reorganizing themselves to try and regain the cap lead, but currently one of the summoners got hit by a strike. A red oh! <laughs> the red goes down! Look at that! What a pick! And now Eon Synergy's down one mech, arguably one of their more important light mechs. Lizzie is sighing with resentment, and we're definitely going to be hearing some curses in Russian in the Eon Synergy comms, if we could hear them. Shabra's at 61%, eating some damage in his summoner F, and the question remains, can Eon Synergy pull something out? Yeah, Daenerys trying to pull some angles, trying to even up the kills at least, even if it's not going to quite make up for a light death. But even so, while Dered did die, he didn't die for nothing because of the fact that Eon Synergy got, managed to get Theta and they hold the cat lead in a fairly commanding presence and it's forcing Phoenix Legion to send one of their light mechs far off in the distance, which in a way is kind of neutralizing the light advantage that they gain. Stimrog and the Wolfhound 1A, even though he's beat up, he's not going to be available for the fight at all. And once Eon Synergy sees that he's not going to be available for the fight, they're going to realize that they might actually have an advantage in this fight because Shabraza is way too beat up to be consistently battling with the rest of his teammates. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised by how far back these Mad Cat Bees on the side of Phoenix Legion are sitting. You know, you, you do have like five, 600 meters optimal on those UX, but it still seems awfully far to be sitting them way back on that ridge. Maybe a Warhawk would have been better, but who knows? Maybe they were expecting the chance of a push. I think with the strategies Phoenix Legion's brought that it was the right call. I think that Eon Synergy knows Phoenix Legion enough to know that they're going to brawl, but we are seeing a bit of a light battle here. Polycat, Casablock, eating some damage from Burya and Daruwin, who are backed up by Jay-Z and his large lasers. Johnny Black coming Johnny Black, that was not the time to peek. Oh my goodness. Absolutely brutal. And oh, he got punished the so hard. <laughs> Jesus, Johnny Black was like Chernobyl, except not Russian. Cubert manages to neutralize Casablock right now. Polycat taking a lot of damage, and the advantage immediately shifts from Phoenix Legion to Eon. Yeah, and Polycat's so running as fast. The summoner is going to die soon. Polycat trying to get out of there, just using Sh Shabraza as a meat shield, I guess. And Polycat down 62%. Shabraza is going to fall right here. Polycat trying to run away. But right now it's a two mech disadvantage. And Stimog isn't even in a fight yet. So he might as well be dead at this point, sadly. Probably sent to Gamma by his team to cap. Not going to work. Right now, Phoenix Legion is caught in a hole. Polycat's getting caught out. He's not getting a lot of help from his team because they're just being rained down upon by Eon Synergy's superior positioning. Mission drop drops to 37%. He's going to die soon to the combination of Daru and Qbert. And Zinjo's also at 54. They're trying to hold up in this cover to get some kills. Oh, Cuber goes down though. Stands and dies. Burya almost got hit by the strike, but Burya manages to get the kill on Zinjo. A random misanthrop are soon to follow, and what a match. Eon Synergy manages to turn it around with two quick kills. Daruin finishes Polycat. Misanthrop looks like he overheats. Burya kills him, and all that's left is a Ren and Stimrog. A Ren probably going to be finished soon right here as he's chasing Burya away to try and steal another kill. Bria said, I'm done. I've, I've got enough kills. <laughs> Let my fresher teammates do this. Daruin coming back from his kill on Polycat. Probably going to try and finish this off. He's got the Hellbringer in back. Backing him Daruin up. Daruin coming up, sweeping it up. Aren goes down. And Stimrog, I don't know what he's going to do. I mean, right now, Phoenix Legion doesn't even have the cat lead despite everything that Stimrog did. Yeah, and it's with this many mechs on Eon side still alive, it's it doesn't even matter. You can't outcap that many mechs. Maybe he tries to pick a kill, see if he can finish off the night gear if he finds them. But Jay Z's probably got to be playing super safe, trying to avoid him. And now they know where Stimrog is. Stimrog living on a prayer, trying to see if he can make something happen, but Jay-Z is not someone to be trifled with. He is a crack shot, and he's not going to let Stimrog kill him easily. Stimrog looks like he's trying to juke whatever shots he can in the Wolfhound, trying to get some key shots on Jay-Z. Jay-Z down 66%, and it's a 66% where it counts. 
lost his right torso, but Stimrog is so beat up at this point, and Jay-Z has support, that it's practically a non-issue. Lerm God coming in with his super fresh Warhawk, and game's over. Hell of a drop five match. What a fight. Oh, we got we got a lot of flaming going on. Oh, Stimrog, not XL apparently. It must be an LFE. Mm-hmm. LFE, let's look at the damage. Dered only 78, but you know what? Who cares? He got carried by the rest of his team. Lizzie 579 damage and the Direwolf Jay-Z MVP again. Hellbringer Prime with 4 year large lasers, 700 damage, bringing the pain. Lerm God 534 and the Warhawk. Qbert and Deruwin excellently playing their Vulcans, 417 and 260 respectively. Meanwhile, Johnny Black doesn't get anything done in his Kintaro because he basically gets erased from existence after making such a very poor poke trying to get some streaks down on the Light Mechs. The rest of Phoenix Legion tries to do admirably. Misanthrop, Zinjo doing decent damage over 300. Stimrog and Cast a block doing over 200 but in the end it just wasn't enough and this game belongs to eon 4-1 that was a that was a very interesting match uh dirt the red man getting getting almost iced so early and then finished off by a kind of odd shot through the through the pillars down from a madcap not exactly how you want to see your match starting off, but his team, you know, flamed a bit, a bit for it. So did so did PHL, but you know, managed Eon managed to kind of pull things back. Those Vulcans, they caught uh, caught the smell of blood, and you know, once they were they the, once they went in, they were they were committed. They chased Polycat and the rest of PHL kind of all the way around to the map the map back into their Mad Cats. I'm not sure if we're going to have an interview period, and this actually benefits us since we'll be able to close out the stream a little earlier than expected, which is fine. All right. Well, that's a shame, but I don't know. You want to go do one one last draw up on the map strat? Uh, that map was kind of crazy, but we'll do our of best. Of course, let's do it. All right, so here on the map strat, we have uh, this this time uh, PHL as Team 2 and uh, Eon as Team 1. Eon kind of taking the more kind of standard approach, sitting some assaults back up in E4. They had the Dire Wolf. I believe the Warhawk was also up there. Uh, Jay-Z eventually kind of... Was it Jay-Z? Jay-Z in the night gear? I believe it was Jay-Z in the night gear. Jay-Z in the night gear kind of working up to F5. PHL setting up a summoner here in E6. Their Mad Cat's up in E7, and I believe I don't know where their other other Mad uh, summoners were. I believe they were working around D6. Eventually, kind of what happened though was uh, Eon managed to get Theta, and that <laughs> kind of motivated them to send uh, Stimrock all the way around the map to kind of pick up Gamma, get the caps back in their favor. But while that was happening, some of the PHL guys, they kind of moved up in E5. I guess they were kind of antsy to get some fire in. Unfortunately, that ended up in the Kentaro making an awful peak over this Echo 5 ridge while Lizzie had dropped down in his dire wolf. And there were a bunch of Eon guys there ready to kind of punish that peak. Johnny Black just gets iced and annihilated for it. Then, <laughs> then the PHL... Lights try and make a mad dash out. Unfortunately, only Polycat makes it out. They killed the uh, one of the remaining Wolfhounds and a Summoner who'd kind of dropped down into D6 over here to maybe save himself. Eventually, we wrap all the way around up to the E7, where the Vulcans just start kind of man-moding, fighting those Mad Cats. We killed, I believe, two of the Vulcans on Eon's side. So... I got awesome some kills out of it. To, I hate to interrupt, but it turns out that these two teams are good for an interview, so we're going to unmute in Discord and drag them down. All right, I'll see you there, sir. Anyways, hell of a match. Hell of a match. Good job to both teams all around. Definitely very good. Now, if you guys don't mind, I'd like to ask some questions. First off, I'd like to start with uh, drop one. Um, so, Arend, take us through that drop. Do you feel that the mechs on the top level of the highway over on Solaris City were able to do enough to try and turn the favor? Or did you guys feel that the firing lines there were inadequate for the task? 
Well, um, this time it didn't work. We scrimmed yesterday, and uh, yesterday it it worked out, and today not. I think um, our assaults on the ground uh, didn't have a great firing line, so and uh, we we were a little bit disconnected there. That's why the the mix on top got a little bit singled out from the beginning, and and when that happens, it's all uh, over very fast. And Lizzie, it seemed like uh, Eon Synergy was getting super aggressive in that push. What prompted you guys to just go in there and go balls to the wall and just force the issue with us? Uh, well, they had more range. With, uh, like The moment we saw UAC Blood Asps, we just like, yeah, decided to cut into them. And then we also saw the AC2 Annihilators, which, were, which is a questionable pick, in my opinion, for Solaris City. But, um, yeah... And you know what? I can't say I disagree. Um, the Annihilators did some work, but perhaps they were better mech suited. Um, going to drop two, Lizzie, this is actually for you. It seemed like you guys really weren't able to stop the push. Why did you feel that you weren't able to... Um, why did it feel that you weren't able to stop Phoenix Legion from just cutting into your team and doing what they needed to do, which was leg and kill everyone? Uh, for communication, brain lag, stupidity, I don't know. All of the above and the, f the fact that Burya in Piranha killed himself with his own strike uh, that's oh we didn't uh, catch it was, yeah, yeah it was like in general like the terrible drop I mean I think most of the most of you DVA teams know that we, Eon actually had some problems with Brawl it's our like weakness known for a couple of years and yeah we have these like uh, awkward moments like I, I was calling that push for I don't know 30 or 40 seconds and uh, calling our lighter max to uh, jump into the pushing like uh, PHL but he just <laughs> did nothing <laughs> and PHL basically <laughs> jump yeah they actually crossed like through the open like without taking any fire without yeah effortlessly so yeah it was it was weird I was a bit salty after that. <laughs> <laughs> and Arend, um, great drop for you guys, even though Eon definitely did mistake, made some mistakes. Hats off to you guys. You showed no hesitation. What were the comms like in your drop? What was the mentality? And what was going through your minds as you pushed? Basically pretty pretty focused on, on getting the, the focus targets. So um, was was kind of working good. Oh yeah, if I might might add as well, yeah, we, we had no focus basically after I died. Like we had linebackers called out as the primary targets, and then I see our mislinks is uh, trying to kill the Vulcan, and I'm like, fuck. Also, a, a big props. Uh, we have to uh, get to Poli because uh, she called out that we almost missed the timer and was uh, heading back to to stop the timer. Otherwise, we we might have uh, would have lost it in the heat of the battle due to timer. So she saved that. Very true. Very true. And now, if you don't mind, Aren, walk us through drop three. What was your plan with the crabs, and why did you hold them back? Well, we we wanted to try. Um, to to set up a, a range game early on with uh, with the two long range mechs, but um, uh, afterwards it would have been probably better to stick to a broader plan. Because uh, um, the long range mechs that, that didn't work out that well. We basically we wanted to 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 force a push towards us, and that didn't work that well. And uh, Lizzie, um, how did your team communicate? enough to make sure that you didn't um, get lured away too far from the crabs or get caught in any situation that would be unfavorable to Eon? Uh, well, we had uh, Jay-Z in Vindicator looking for the PHL's lights because well, our, our plan was actually actually to push the Battle Masters. When Rand is saying that their plane failed, it's like not completely true. We wanted to push the Battle Masters, uh, but we also had to look for the lights for PHL's lights because they were like in in the middle of the circle and were waiting, I guess, to jump on me on the Medcat. And like the moment they got too close, we just made a call to come back and kill the lights, and that's what pretty much happened. 
Oh, okay. Interesting. All right. And um, now drop four, um, take us through the idea behind their end. The push seemed to be very aggressive. Um, Would you say that the light getting pick really changed your strategy up heavily? Or would you say that the plan still, that the plan went our way? What kind of fell apart for your team during that? Well, I, I guess uh, the the lights got a little bit, little bit caught, uh, caught out, and um, then we had to push, and yeah, that wasn't very favorable for us to push. We we didn't had that that much firing lines because every everything was was stacked up around this um, this pillar, and and then then the mix could could turn out there, and uh, that that was a, a big mess. So really didn't work. And now, Lizzie, I don't think I need to go into drop four for you. That definitely seemed more of an individual skill match since you guys played very well rotating in and out. But for drop five, I've got to ask, what was your reaction when Dered? Um, well, if I might say a few words about drop four as well. well first of all, we felt pretty comfortable going into uh, Rubelite because PHL expanded all their lighter max uh on the polar we were a little bit concerned about the possible um, cap strats uh, for rubelite but we saw that like linebackers were uh used uh, wolfhounds and vulcan uh vulcans were used as well uh, and uh, in general this team two side which was the draw four it's the weaker side in my opinion so we just uh, uh had a push in mind just go straight into them and kill them and as for the drop five, um, I don't know. Uh, well, first of all, like uh, both Buria and the Red, they're not playing the game uh, that much right now. So I guess you can expect some grave mistakes from them sometimes. But yeah, in general, I'm uh, uh, I'm a bit mad about our lights performance today because Buria double deed in two games. The Red basically died for nothing. Uh, well, he has that going for him. Sometimes he, sometimes he's like over aggressive, and uh, that can result in his death. Sometimes. Very Take interesting. Notes. Thank you for bringing. Thank you for bringing up the fact that they ran out of light mechs, and that kind of helped you facilitate your plans and drop four. And, um, I'm sorry. Go on, a red. I apologize. Yeah, so for 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 drop five, that's, that's our plan for drop five was more to uh, set up a, a cap game and our idea was to to cut out some lights with um, with with the streak mech but where well, with uh, three vulcans and and a uh, wolfhound as, as lights that didn't work out that, that good we the 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 direct catch was was favorable but but then the the vulcans kind of uh, pulled us apart from from the end I understand you needed cap lead, but why send Stimrog out to cap when it kind of felt necessary to utilize your greater numbers and lights to force the issue against their light lance and maybe try and get some pushes in or try and cap points that are a little closer to the field of uh, to be honest, I, I don't know what the situa- situation it was at that moment. Um I guess uh, he got caught because it was an opportunity to get, to get the cap. I'm not sure. Toaster, any Fair questions enough. from you? Um, not not really. I mean, great matches overall today from both teams. You know, or maybe some mistakes on both sides. <laughs> some lights getting picked, but overall, real fun matches. And uh, props props to both teams putting on a great show. Always a pleasure to watch you on Synergy, Lizzie, proven you guys are definitely still a top dog, but a rend. Those were some amazing matches as well. Both of you guys put up a hell of a fight, and I can't wait to see more of you two in EU. I'm definitely going to be paying more. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, have a good day, evening, morning, <laughs> whatever. Uh, it's afternoon, it's fine. But anyway, great matches, guys. Um, have a wonderful day, and good luck in the rest of your Thanks. Thanks. See ya. See ya. All right, Saruman. We'll just finish this off in Discord, I guess. Any uh, final well. thoughts? Any final thoughts? Um, the final thought, once again, even though it's after the interview, we've already previewed it. 10.30 EST tonight. The match 
everyone is going to want to see from the NA side. We already saw a great play from the EU side. Now it's NA's turn to showcase what it can do. Black Omen versus EMP. High level match coming at 10:30 tonight on this very same channel, NWO Leagues. Make sure you guys come in and watch that match take part, and make sure you watch the return of the legendary casting duo of MDM Zero and Bandit B17. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I know that I'm going to try and step in and maybe troll the Twitch chat a little bit too. I have my chance to do so, and Toaster, I know I can expect you as well. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll be in there, you know, flaming as much as I can, flaming pilots, flaming casters, probably flaming you a little bit. Hopefully MD and Bandit's predictions go better than ours. We didn't see a single ATM or Lerm today, so... Whoops. Well, you know what? I was hoping that we'd see ATMs or Lerms. We're definitely going to be seeing some after the buff, but you know what? We did see ATMs last night, and that's oh, going to... Yeah. Blame it on blame it on EU just being being their own thing, doing their own thing. You know, we're just those silly NA casters. What do we know? Silly NA casters doing NA things, and now to end the cast thank you very much all for viewing it was nice to see a nice turnout for this match high level div a eu play is always something to enjoy and for next time toaster say uh signing off see you later everybody everybody have a good day stick around for that black omen versus emp match and be happy and shoot roll